welcome to daily news analysis of Shankar AIS Academy. Today's topic of discussion is this three articles taken from two dates newspaper which is October 6th and October 7th. This first article which is India's territorial integrity must be respected says Canada. We will discuss about the bilateral relationship between the India and Canada and what are the strains in their relationship. And the second article day after PAC summons SEBI chief the BJP MP claims move against the rules to see the speaker intervention. In this article, we will see what is the PAC, which is the Public Account Committee, detaily. And in the third article, the World Bank mills 27 of 30 ideas on MDB by the G20 independent groups. We will discuss about the World Bank detaily. So, before going to the discussion, I have an important announcement. Shankar AS Academy is going to conduct a pre-storming test series which consists of almost 48 tests. You can enroll in this test by clicking in the link given below in the description. And without further delay, let us get into today's discussion. Take a look at this news article taken from the Hindu newspaper. So, our finance minister Nirmala Sitaraman has appreciated the World Bank for considering 27 out of 30 recommendations made by the group G20 independent expert group which focuses mainly on strengthening the multilateral development banks. So, on this note, we have to understand about the World Bank detaily. So, World Bank is a global level financial institution which was formed in the year 1944 at a conference called as the Britain Woods Conference. In that conference, along with the World Bank, IMF, which is the International Monetary Fund, was also formed. The main goal of this financial institution is to reduce the poverty as well as assist the member countries to undergo the sustainable development in their countries. Over time, the World Bank has evolved into a group called as the World Bank Group, which consists of almost five institutions in them. So, these five institutions will provide the financial as well as technical assistance to the member nations. Before seeing the five institutions and what are their functions, let us see what is the objective of this World Bank. First is to promote the economic development. So, how will they do this economic development to the member countries? They will provide loans to assist in the economic development and this will improve the infrastructure particularly in the low income countries. This is the first objective of the World Bank. They also provide loans in a low interest and a long repayment period. This will help the poor countries to eradicate the poverty as well as to reduce the inequality among them. As already said, it is a global level financial institution. So, it will provide the loan and expert advice for conducting a sustainable development project. And the final objective of World Bank is to support in the achievement of the sustainable development goals. As already know, we have sustainable goals starting from one, no poverty, zero hunger, good health and well-being, quality education, so and so on. You can learn all these SDG goals and quote it in the mains examination to enhance the quality of your answers. So, now we will see what is the funding mechanism of this World Bank. First is the issuance of bond. So, the World Bank will issue the bond in the global market and this is a main source of income for the World Bank. They also derive the contribution from the member countries. As already said, they will give the loans. The interest which they get from the loan is also a source of the fund. In whole, they have three sources, which is the income which they get from issuing the bond in the global market and second, the contributions from the member countries and third, the income from the loan interest. So, the income which is generated from these three sources is used to finance new loans. Thus, this is creating a cycle of development support. Whenever you are reading an international organization, you have to definitely read the key reports which are published by them because these are usually asked in the prelims examination. So, the three main reports which are published by the World Bank are World Development Report, International Debt Statistics and thirdly, we have the Global Economic Prospects. So, in the start of the discussion, I mentioned about the World Bank Group. So, this group consists of five organizations. We will see one by one and what are the functions of it. First, we have the IBRD which is the 
international bank for reconstruction and development so what is the function of this ibrd they will provide the loan to middle income countries and some credible low income countries so these loans are used to fund the projects in these countries such as in sectors like infrastructure energy human development project and this loan will in turn help to promote the economic growth in this region next we have the ida which is the international development association so they will give the loans to the poorest nation so along with the loans they will also give grants one favorable thing in this granting the loan is they are given in very low interest and a long repayment period which is favorable for the low income countries so this loans are in turn used to reduce the poverty in this country as well as to enhance the standard of living in these poor nations and thirdly we have the ifc which is the international finance corporation the main aim of this ifc is to promote the private sector development in the developing nations so how they will promote the private sector development in these nations they will invest in the private sector enterprises along with it they will also provide the advisory services to the private sector in the developing countries and thirdly to expand the business they will also give the capital this is the function of the international finance corporation and fourthly we have the miga which is the multilateral investment guarantee agency so this agency will provide a insurance called as the political risk insurance they will give this insurance both to the investors as well as lenders this will help to facilitate the foreign direct investment in the developing nations so by providing the insurance to the developing nation it will ensure that the investment are protected against the unfavorable conditions such as war and the seizure of properties and the final organization in the world bank group is the icsid which is the international center for settlement of investment dispute so it is the function of the organization can be identified by the name itself it is a investment dispute redressal group so they will offer the arbitration for any investment groups between the international investors and the country which they have invested which is the host country so this organization will help us to create a investor friendly environment particularly in the developing nations but you have to note that india has not ratified the icsid convention this is the five world bank groups and the function of the each group so now we will see what is the relationship between india and world bank you have to understand that india and world bank have a long standing relationship because india is a major borrower from the world bank so the world bank has given assistance to india in many development projects such as the pradhan mantri gram sadak yojana in the year 2020 world bank has provided almost 500 million dollars for construction of roads in under the pradhan mantri gram sadak yojana as already said they will give the financial assistance to developing nations such as india on many sectors such as infrastructure rural development energy and poverty reduction talking about the energy in the year 2016 world bank has granted almost 1 billion dollars to enhance the solar power capacity in india so from this we can understand that world bank has played a major role in the india's economic transformation because it has contributed to the nation's economic growth as well as reforms so with this knowledge in mind let's see a prelims practice question let me read the question first which of the following institution is responsible for providing loans to the middle income countries as a part of world bank group so the answer will be c which is international bank for reconstruction and development which is ibrd option a is incorrect because the world bank is giving loans to the poor countries under the ida so and option b is also incorrect because international finance corporation they are giving loans to enhance the private sector enterprises in the developing nations so the correct answer will be c which is ibrd with this we'll conclude the discussion on this article and now let's move on to the next one take a look at this news article taken from the indian express news sir let's understand why it is in the news first and what is the news first you have to understand that pac is nothing but the 
it's a parliamentary committee called as the public account committee usually the leader or the chairperson of this committee will be the member from the leader of opposition in the lok sabha with this this news is that the bjp members of the public account committee are saying that the pac chairman venugopal to move the review to the sebi performance is unconstitutional and it is violating the parliamentary rules so based on that the bjp mp nishikan dubey has written a letter to the speaker om birla seeking to stop the inquiry and arguing that the pac do not have the authority to scrutinize the sebi this is the news with this let's understand what is pac what is the purpose of pac what is the composition and membership what are their powers we will also see what are the important judgments related to the pac so let's start it simple what is pac it is a parliamentary committee which consists of members from both lok sabha as well as rajya sabha they will ensure that the funds are used by the government efficiently and legally and only for the intended purpose so how will they do this they will examine the accounts of government they will examine the audits which are conducted by the cag by this examination they will ensure that the financial accountability and transparency is proper in the government expenditures so with this this is a basics about the pac the keywords are they will ensure the accountability and transparency in the government expenditure this is the main and primary function of this pac so what is the composition it consists of about 22 members and 15 members are from lok sabha and another seven members are from the rajya sabha they are elected from the respected house note that they are elected and not appointed so the election is from the respected house that is the lok sabha members of the public account committee are elected from the respective lok sabha house and the rajya sabha members of the public account committee are elected from the rajya sabha house by the method of proportional representation and the single transferable vote note that they are elected annually and they are eligible for the reappointment as already said the chairperson of this committee will be the member from the leader of member from the opposition party in the lok sabha so this will ensure the neutrality as well as accountability in the public account committee so what are the functions of this committee first is the examination of account they will review the appropriation account as well as finance account appropriation account is nothing but the amount which is actually spent and amount which is budgeted in the parliament this is called as the appropriation account and what is finance account it is nothing but it is the total record of all the income expenditure of the government in the particular financial year this is called as the finance account they will review both this account along with the reports of the cag so by reviewing this account they will ensure that the funds are used efficiently and as authorized by the parliament and the second function is the scrutiny of expenditure this ensures that the public funds are spent only for the authorized purposes so we know each year the parliament will fix the budget and this pac will ensure that the expenditure will not exceed the appropriation which is granted by the parliament in the budget and the third function is the regulatory audits so the public account committee has the power to call for the audit of ministers as well as department you have to note that they do not have the power to review the internal functioning but they have the power to call for audit of ministers and departments that to on reliance of the cag reports and the last function of this pac is to summon the official they have the power to summon the officials that is government officials from the ministries as well as representatives from the ministry that to only for testifying on the matters of public expenditure and the audit findings so now we will see what are the important judgments related to the public account account committee first is the sp gupta versus the union of india case so this case said that the public account committee are essential for ensuring the transparency and cannot be constrained in the role of scrutinizing the executive action so in crest it is said that the public account committee is essential and second case is the tn session versus the union of india case in the year 1995 so this case said that the public account committee has the power to 
seek the explanation from the public authority especially in the case of financial issue because this is a financial committee one another thing you have to understand is we have three financial committee one is the public account committee we have the estimates committee and third we have a committee on public undertakings so they have the power to seek the explanation this is what this case said and thirdly we have the kalpana mehta versus the union of india case in the year 2018 so this case said that the reports of the public account committee have a relevance in this judicial uh, proceedings so what do this infer it says that it is emphasizing that the findings of the public account committee hold a significance to ensure the government accountability these are the main cases which are related to the public account committee and the findings of the case which you have to remember first is to seek the explanation and the sc gupta case it's a reinform that it is essential that is public account committee is essential and thirdly it said that the reports of the public account committee have a relevance in the judicial proceeding which will enforce the importance of the public account committee to ensure the transparency in the expenditure of the government so having discussed about the powers and what are the cases related to the public account committee now we will see what are the limitations in the public account committee so they can rely only on the recommendation actions based on its finding and they cannot enforce the decision this is the main limitation first limitation with respect to the public account committee and they cannot investigate the policy decision of the government their main focus on the financial aspect of the expenditure and they cannot investigate the policy decision of the government and lastly they will ensure that they will have a check on the financial administration of the government so this will enhance the transparency in the public expenditure this is the main function of the public account committee they will ensure the transparency as well as accountability of the government expenditure so with this knowledge in mind let's see a prelims practice question the question is which of the following statement is or correct regarding the public account committee first the public account committee is a standing committee yes it is a standing committee which means that they are formed throughout the year and not only during the session that is the budget monsoon and winter session they are present throughout the year so the first option would be correct the second option is the primary function of the public account committee is to examine the annual audit reports of the cag this is also correct the third option will be the pac can call for any person to give evidence or produce documents relevant to its work so this is incorrect we have discussed they can call only the government official and a representative from the ministry to testify for the matters related to public expenditure and the audit finding so this option is incorrect so the correct answer is a which is 1 and 2 with this we'll conclude the discussion on this article and now let's move on to the next one so look at this news article this is talking about the canada and india relationship first you have to understand that usually these two countries have a positive relationship but they do have a certain strain such as uh, the khalistan separatist movement india is concerned over the canada's tolerance towards the pro khalistani elements in their country so this has particularly affected the relationship between them khalistan movement is nothing but they are opting for a separate sikh state so this is supported or tolerated by the canada and which is a major concern for india and recently in the last year there was a assassination of a khalistani activist called as the hardeep singh nijjar in the canada and after that the canadian pm justin accused indians for the assassination of the hardeep singh so both these countries were uh, facing a friction in the situation and both the countries expelled their diplomats on this regard this is the issue last year but in this news it says that canada has said to respect the territorial integrity of the india and this denotes there is a potential improvement in the diplomatic relationship between both the countries which is strained because of the hardi singh and the khalistani separate issue so on this note let's try to understand and have a quick review about the relationship between both the countries in all the dimensions that is political and diplomatic dimensions the trade and economic dimensions as well as we'll also see what is the people to people connectivity in this both these countries and the defense cooperation you have to understand that india and canada have a multifaceted bilateral relationship be it in the diplomatic economic 
cultural, strategic and all the dimensions. So let's start with the historical ties first. Soon after the independence, that is in the 1947, both countries established a diplomatic relationship and both the countries are a member of commonwealth and they share some shared values such as the democratic values, the parliamentary system as well as the commitment to the multilateralism. Multilateralism is nothing but many countries are coming together to work together to solve a global problem. This is called as the multilateralism. Over the years, there has been many high level visits between both the countries and this has contributed to strengthen the relationship between them because they have discussed in sectors such as trade, energy and many strategic issues. So, one notable thing is that our Prime Minister Modi has visited the Canada in the year 2015 and the Canadian Prime Minister Justin has visited India in 2018. So, this bilateral visits has improved the relationship between both the countries because they have discussed the factors on all the sectors such as the trade energy. So, now we will see what is the economic and trade relationship between both countries. So, trade is an important aspect in the relationship between both the countries because the value of the bilateral trade between both countries is approximately 7.7 .7 billion dollars in the year 2022 and both countries are working to sign an agreement trade agreement called as the sepa which is the comprehensive economic partnership agreement which will ease the trade relationship between both the countries and build a strong relationship between them you also have to understand that both countries are investing on each other's soil. For example, we have the Canadian Pension Plan Investment Board and other investors who are involved in various Indian projects. Similarly, the Indian companies are also investing in Canada, particularly in the field of IT, mining and pharmaceuticals. This is with respect to the investment relationship between both the countries. And third, we have the economic energy cooperation between both the countries, especially focusing on the nuclear and the renewable energy sectors. So, both countries have signed an agreement in the year 2010 called as the India-Canada Civil Nuclear Cooperation. Under this, the Canada is exporting uranium to India only for the civilian nuclear energy purposes. Note that it is only for the civilian energy nuclear purposes and not for the military purposes. You can also remember the name of this agreement. Now, we will see what is the defense cooperation between both these countries. Both countries have a same goal and a shared goal on the peacekeeping, counter-terrorism and maritime security. So, they are participating in multilateral forums such as UN, G20 and Commonwealth and are focusing on issues such as the counter-terrorism and keep a check on them. Talking about the Indo-Pacific region, both countries have a same goal that is to support a free as well as an open Indo-Pacific region. So, both are collaborating together to ensure the regional security and economic cooperation in this region. And the important factor which you have to discuss is the Indian diaspora in the Canada. Indian diaspora in Canada is one of the strongest aspect of the relationship between both these countries because over 1.4 million people of Indian origin are living in Canada which is about 4% of the population of Canada, which is a significant amount. And these communities have a major role in the political, economic and the cultural life of Canada. Another important fact is that almost 2.5 lakh students from India are studying in the Canadian institution. This is one of the major and a large group of international students in Canada. So, this is a mention of the issue I already mentioned. So, we have a diplomatic tension over the Khalistan separatist movement and both these countries expel their diplomats. And now we have ongoing efforts to discuss the trade agreements and security cooperation, which is the SEPA, Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreements, particularly in the areas of counter-terrorism and organized crime. This is what you have to understand about the India-Canada relationship to have a basic knowledge about the relationship between both these countries. So, let us see... Uh, geography question from the Canada. So, which of the following river is not flowing through Canada? So, the Mackenzie River, St. Lawrence River and Churchill River flows through Canada, but the river Trent do not follow, do not flow through Canada. With this, we will conclude discussion on this article. And if you found the video informative, do hit like, 
give your feedbacks as comment and don't forget to subscribe thank you have a nice day